Um, being in a touring band. Sort of vague, I think. Yeah, well, this is the first band I've ever been in, yeah. pretty much. So, uh, uh, I have no frame of reference. It's but, a good uh, thing, though. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, shows on the road didn't yeah. get much better. I mean, it's been, it's been the experience of a lifetime, really. I mean, I've always, for as long as I can remember, as long as I've been into music and playing music, I've wanted to be in a band that, you know, traveled a lot and got to see parts of the country and and and, and you do see all types of stuff. Um it's 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 definitely been real interesting. I, I don't know where I'm going with this. started in technically you could say 1995 me and Gopal uh, picked up our first instruments started making some noise through a couple of broken amps by a crate manufacturing company and uh, 1996 I guess is what you could call our official start when we uh, when the band name first came around and we actually started making some some music that that actually had a structure that was you know actual song structure uh, versus just a loop for a long time, which we still do occasionally, but um, when we started to really have a format and started to have a real 
a sound that was Bella Morte. And, uh, yeah, we were playing in an old warehouse, very cold warehouse. <laughs> and, uh, since then, we've moved into practicing here at my house. So uh, after we after we uh, first met and you know played around and and <laughs> um, I have nothing to say <laughs> right now. Oh, the bands. Yeah. Yeah. And we uh. I have the first tape remorse. Yeah, we we self produced a tape uh, that we called Remorse had six really poorly produced songs on. We just recorded it straight into a tape deck and. Uh, was fun. Yeah, we put out, you know, a hundred copies of those and sold a few and gave away most. And uh, it got us some attention and got us some local gigs, you know, in-state gigs. And um, things kept rolling, kept rolling. We kept getting more attention from our from our live performances. We won a, uh, a Central Virginia Battle of the Bands, which um, afforded us enough money to finally go into a real studio setting where we recorded at a Sound of Music studio in Richmond, Virginia, which is owned by Dave Lowry of Cracker, who is really kind to us. Like, um, Ricky Tubb was our engineer. He's from a band called The Waking Hours. And um, we got to play on all Cracker's instruments because our, our crap kept breaking on us. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was horrible. After a while, we decided that we wanted to get a third member, basically because I was playing guitar and singing at the time. And he sucks. I did that. <laughs> oh wait, <laughs> sorry, no, no, that's not what I meant to say. Yeah. After a while, we decided to uh, <laughs> kind of laugh. Dude. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Shut up, man. Okay, here we go. Yeah, after a while, um, we decided that I would. <laughs> After a while, we decided to pick up a third member, basically because at the time I was playing guitar and singing, and uh, our songs were starting to get more complex, and it was hard for me to do both at once, and also allowed me for a lot more motion on stage, so we uh, got in touch with a friend of mine, an old friend of mine named Frizzle, who was in a metal band I was in, he's a, a punk rocker, he's still playing shows in the DC area with some other really good punk bands. But uh, he played with us for about a year, and he was never really like an official member of the band by his own choosing. You know, we were we were interested in him at the time, like you know, being a part of us. But it was never really his thing, even though he he fit in real well, and we made some made some really good songs with him. Um, but when a year later um, he left on good terms, started his own punk band in Richmond, as I said. And then we started trying out a couple of people, and that's where Ben came into the story. And he is a permanent guitarist, and he's going to be, you know, a prominent figure on the next CD. Uh, every song that we've written that's going to be on that CD just about was written with him in the band, so. Yeah. He's done most of the guitar work. And look at that smile. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been what, two years now? Yeah, he's been in the band two years. <laughs>
It's so uh, interesting how in the how in this dark wave scene, um, unlike so many other scenes, who uh, only try to stick to writing one thing, it's almost like a combination of taking a contemporary song groupings and uh, binding it with the, the concepts of fantasy. And uh, I was wondering what your feelings on uh, on that sort of uh, that sort of energy and inspiration is. Is this uh, true with Bella Morte? The way you write. The, uh, uh, yeah, the, the bonding of modern and, and past, is that what you're yeah. saying? Yeah. We like, have a, actually kind of a specific rule. It's not a rule, it's, it's something that just happened, but it's become rule because it's been there all along. Um, in any of our songs, you will not find a reference to technology, um, old or new, uh, pretty much. You, or, songs, or unless it's very ambiguous, like you'll yeah. see like city lights, you'll hear yeah. that in a song. But it could be but you fire, will not. You yeah. know, it could yeah. be candlelight. We, we don't like to give our, our songs any kind of period marking. We don't like you to know when we're talking about, where in a hundred years you can pop this song on and it's still going to make sense because we weren't talking about now, now. You know, we could have been talking about the future for all the song says. Yeah, we could have been, yeah, the future or a hundred years past. Or exactly. Yeah, like, Univer any time there's <coughs> Universal ideas. Yeah. 